Welcome back to Deep Rock Galactic, the game that made me associated more with the Gloomstalker mask rather than my actual brand. Since the Lethal Company video is under construction, I'm here today to give you a monolith-sized video for you to gnaw on in the meantime. I have compiled all the overclock videos into a Frankenstein abomination so that you don't have to navigate the series yourself. Also, so that you know the other videos actually exist. But that's not all. I'll be leaving them in their undoctored states and take you on a journey through the improvements they've experienced over the last year. So that's why people think I'm a DRG channel. Oh, and I won't be adding my Season 4 update video nor talking about the recent maintenance update in this marathon. I won't be able to make amends to it in the future, so I might as well keep it in its slightly outdated glory. With that being said, I'm gonna play with the roll control changes while you watch this. <laughs> oh, son of a... I don't know if you guys have this problem, but I swear, every time I'm not the server host, my ping decides to do its best economy impression and inflates. I have a solution for this. And no, it's not resolving the US's debt. It's Gear Up Booster. Observe. I just select the game that I don't want to run like an epileptic hamster, and it does all the complicated things for me. Note, if your connection is already equivalent to mainlining the ethernet out of a server room, you will experience minimal changes. Now instead of having ping in the triple digits, things die when I tell them to. But explosive! You'll still get hit by a ping spike and die a horrific death to a bolt detonator from the future. WRONG! Your ping is going to be rock and stone solid, since Gear Up Booster finds a direct route to your nearest server and won't randomly shift to a different one. Unless you want it to, of course. You can select different regions and ensure a consistent connection with dives happening in Australia without your computer trying to connect to anything that resembles an electrified stick. Don't believe me? Well, you don't have to. It's not like it's used in competitive scenes like Fortnite, Counter-Strike, Valorant, Apex, League, Dota, Siege, Discord, Overwatch... Uh, Discord? If you couldn't tell by the roster, this app is also kosher with anti-cheat systems and won't result in you getting banished just because you wanted to actually play the video games you like. Oh, right. Now that I can enjoy shooting flaming windmills at invertebrates, I should let you guys watch the rest of the video. Special thanks to my sponsor, Gear Up Booster, for making this happen. Anyone new to Gear Up can use the link below to start a free trial and see if Gear Up is right for you. While using Gear Up, I managed to sink my ping all the way down to 11. I highly doubt any of you can make it below that, but feel free to prove me wrong. With that out of the way, let's watch some videos. Starting off, we of course have Scout, not because they are my most or least favorite dwarf, but because I ordered the classes like a box of crayons. And yes, I say crayon instead of crayon. This video had the misfortune of coming first in the series, and because of that it is vastly different from everything else. Most notably, the script is very loose, and some of the overclocks are mentioned in the same breath. This compact nature of the video is also why it was the only one that wasn't a two-parter. Welcome to Scout. Wait a minute, you already did Scout. I know. But SOME PEOPLE were a bit annoyed that I didn't mention their favorite overclocks for the Deep Core and Boomstick. So out of spite, I'm dedicating four videos to covering the 148 overclocks approved and rejected by R&D safety testing. So let's electrify our ammo and pack the special powder because we have some blank cores to grind. First off is the epic, the mystical, the legendary, Deep Core GK2. I need more ammo! This standard issue bullet dispenser specializes in vomiting ammunition as hard and fast as possible. Both compact ammo and gas rerouting focus on shooting lots, but in different ways. With compact ammo decreasing your recoil while increasing your mag size, and gas rerouting juicing up your fire rate complemented by hastened reloads. But if you want a little more risk in your clean overclocks, you can homebrew some powder. This bastardization of gunpowder is a real hit or miss, with your damage being randomized for every shot. The good news is that your damage has a better chance of being above average rather than below, so taking this overclock is not that much of a gamble. Now if you want some consequences for your actions, let me show you the balanced overclocks. Overclocked firing mechanism gives you the opportunity to distribute your bullets with maximum speed. The problem is your flimsy wrists can't handle the newfound might of your rifle, so you're gonna have to fight your recoil more than your enemies. But if you'd rather do more damage with the ammo you have, Bullets of Mercy will shatter the life expectancy of any targets inflicted with a status effect at the cost of having a tiny magazine. So find the driller least likely to smithering your atoms and end the suffering of your enemies. Now we have the category that can alter the game itself and more often than not invents new mechanics for your weapons. The Unstable Overclocks. AI Stability Engine does less damage and shoots slower, but the recoil is reduced to zero, bullet spread is almost reset instantly, and you deal bonus damage to weak points. That means you can simply point and click on enemy heads and the only thing you can blame for missing is yourself. And lastly, we have Electrifying Reloads. Uh, your reloads are... electrifying. 
When you reload, all your bullets fired will burst into electricity. This inflicts your foes with a shocking DOT. The sad part is, your magazines are much smaller and you carry less ammo in general. But let's get away from the automatic assault and bring out the M1 Garand. First is the most renowned M1 overclock, the Hover Clock. Performing a focus shot while in the air will reduce your speed allowing for sick air shots and giving you another tool to prevent sending your legs through your torso. Minimal clips is very misleading. Instead of reducing your clip capacity, it's actually increased. Sprinkle in some faster reloads and you'll be ejecting bullets as fast as your clips. Active stability system allows you to perform focus shots quicker while not hampering your movement. Unfortunately, this adds a bonus half second to your reload time, so make sure you use that bonus mobility to keep your problems at a minimally threatening distance. Hipster lets you equip suspenders to accentuate your magnificent facial hair- wait, that's the wrong thing. Hipster converts your pseudo-sniper into a semi-auto assault rifle. Damage may be reduced, but it's made up for with significant fire rate, half the recoil, and nearly double the ammo. So cast aside your pledge to precision and hip-fire these monsters. But if you want your focus shot to be the focus of your weapon, the unstable overclocks have you covered. Electrocuting focus shot is exactly what it sounds like. When you charge up your weapon, the bullet is infused with electricity. Unfortunately, being striked by a miniature lightning bolt isn't quite as painful as being impaled by a lead spike going 2,300 miles per hour. Both the positive and negatives of this overclock only apply to your sniping, so don't worry about your hipfire gaming. Now instead of reducing your damage, supercooling chamber increases it. Focus damage specifically. At the cost of your ammo. And your charge speed. And your legs. The Plasma Carbine weaponizes the fourth state of matter and generates heat faster than a conversation about politics. So you need to figure out how many protons and insults you're going to be dishing out. Aggressive venting turns the byproduct of your carnage into another means of destruction. By trapping the heat until your weapon starts to malfunction, you can fry the air, causing the nearby bugs to combust and slowly run away from you. And to aid your weapon in overheating more often, the venting process helps it recover faster from nearly exploding. But if you want to keep things cool, thermal liquid coolant causes your weapon to generate less heat and cool down faster between barrages. Impact deflection turns your balls of plasma into bouncy balls of plasma. Your fire rate is tragically decreased, but it's well worth it to see lasers ricochet off of surfaces and regular faces. Rewiring mod takes a unique approach to your persistent heat problems. Instead of venting the heat properly or using improved coolant, you convert some of your excess heat back into ammunition. Somehow. Your overheat duration is increased to salvage as much energy as possible. Unfortunately, your battery capacity is decreased, so you're still gonna have ammo problems. What also has a smaller battery is Overtuned Particle Accelerator. But instead of being balanced by regenerating ammunition, it is your punishment for having increased damage. And if you know your damage based on stable overclocks, you are well aware that the consequences are still coming. You gain 50% more heat per shot, and your spread is dramatically increased. But ain't more damage though. Now you're going to want efficient shield regeneration for this next overclock, because shield battery booster increases your damage and projectile speed whenever your shield is full. You also gain increased fire rate and battery capacity. Wow, that sounds pretty cool! How bad could the downsides possibly be? Terrible cooling rate, awful heat per shot, double the overheat duration, and your shield is obliterated every time you overheat. To keep with the theme of unstable overclocks being terrible for heat management, thermal exhaust feedback gives you increased fire damage past 50% heat at the cost of bonus heat per shot and overheat duration. Man, why can't any of the unstable overclocks be good at venting? Anyway, let's finally get into the secondaries, starting off with the Jury Rig Boomstick. Its compact shells allow for more ammo capacity and faster reload. Alternatively, if you want to increase your DPS the way a true shotgun wielder would, Double Barrel will allow you to exclusively fire both barrels at once. You also do one more damage. Now we have the most exciting overclock that will invalidate the rest of your scout experience. I know it's a bit early to talk about a weird and wacky game changer, but Special Powder is considered a clean overclock since it has no downsides. Stuffing your shells with nitroglycerin instead of gunpowder gives you some mad midair hops. You can use this momentum boost for a variety of things, such as double jump, triple jump, negate fall damage, bestow fall damage, remove yourself from situations, remove yourself into situations, and just rearrange someone's face like normal. You will eventually shatter your ankles, and if you ever switch off this overclock, you will spend every waking moment thinking, if only I had special powder, then I'd be able to get over there. I know I have a grappling hook, and my legs have finally healed, but what's the point of moving if it isn't using the kick of a shotgun using shells the size of energy drinks? Stuffed shells has an extra gram of gunpowder and an additional pellet in them for a tiny damage boost. 
But you know what else will increase your damage? Tightening the spread. With shaped shells, the base spread of your shotgun is reduced by 50% to get more of your pellets to where you want them. You did neglect to grab a few shells before leaving for Hoxies, but it's whatever. And for the final boomstick overclock, we have Jumbo Shells. You replace the tiny BBs of your shells with ball bearings. This significantly increases your damage, but the overwhelming weight of your ammo means that you can't carry too much of it and reloading takes forever. Swapping the boomstick's high damage with its low ammo count, we have the Zhukov. Minimal magazines makes these dual Uzis fire a bit faster and halves their reload. This will help you run out of ammo even faster than you already do. Yay! Custom casings increases your magazine size at the cost of a tiny fire rate reduction. At this point, why even tamper with the fire rate? These are such insignificant amounts! Anyway, now we're getting into the spicy overclocks. Cryo mindlets suffer from damage and mag size, but when your bullets strike a surface, they turn into time-delayed ice grenades. This flash freezes any hostiles nearby, making them highly susceptible to whatever nefarious things you have planned for them. But maybe you don't want to switch off your pistols to kill your enemies. Maybe you want your bullets to explode with thermite instead of liquid nitrogen. With embedded detonators, any bullets you drive into fleshy bits will explode upon reloading. This increases your overall damage. Unfortunately, it merits your base damage being lowered. And your clip size being lowered. And your ammo capacity being lowered. Gas recycling increases your damage and armor breaking. You can't get crits, have a massive spread, and are slowed while firing. But that hardly matters when your targets are too large to miss and everything else is liquefied before it becomes a problem. And finally, we have the Nishanka. Nishanka. Ugh. Crossbow! Quick fire doubles your projectile's velocity and decreases your reload time. Nothing too special there. Get, get it? Because the next overclock is specialist? And it exclusively affects your special ammo? Ha ha ha! The Specialist increases your special ammo capacity as well as the duration of whatever funky effects those bolts are producing. But if you want your normal bolts to be funky as well, both the balanced overclocks will satisfy this desire. Cryo Bolt and Fire Bolt will reduce your base damage and prevent your bolts from being recovered, but they will bestow your enemies with Frostbite and Third Degree Burns, respectively. Additionally, shooting the ground with these bolts will trigger the effect on anything walking over it. Bodkin points have less damage and your reload is increased as well, but the bolts you fire bounce into nearby enemies, giving your single shot sniper an abstract form of AoE. And lastly, we have the Trifork Volley. Like the previous overclock, you deal less damage and have a slow reload, but instead of shooting one bolt at a time, you cram three of those suckers in there and fire them simultaneously. Your bolts don't get destroyed from doing this, but you can't retrieve them for some reason. At least you have an increased ammo capacity to make up for that. Alright, everyone make it out alive? Good. Huh? No music? Well, does the next video have a gift for you? Not only does it take the segmentation and skill pop-ups from my Risk of Rain 2 Commando video, but it is also the true beginning of me using music in my videos with the help of in-audio. They did not sponsor me to say that, by the way. I'd just been using their stuff this whole time and never vocally said it. I had music before, using the OSTs in the Hi-Fi Rush and Cult of the Lamb videos, so I had some experience in knowing when to place cuts and how to make the music sync with the clips. Welcome back to Gunner, the one-man army with the strength of a Terminator and bone density resembling Swiss cheese. Don't worry, Mission Control, I'll make it back to the drop pod before my spine gives out. Your mobile defense turret mounts and swinkalicious sidearms already have the power to stop the pulse of anything crawling on Hoxie's 4. But wouldn't it be cool if you could crossbreed your minigun with a dragon? That's right, we're adding some big fun to these big guns, so raid the nearest military base and let's show these bugs the power of lead and gunpowder. Starting our journey with the firearm aficionado is the lead storm powered minigun. One of the main drawbacks of this multi-barreled massacre is the delay between deciding to kill something and that something in question finding out what a 762 by 51 mm NATO cartridge feels like when it's propelled through their flesh at supersonic speeds. With a little more oomph, you alleviate this problem by reducing spin-up time. And if this overclock being the one spin-up producer isn't tantalizing enough for you, you also get one extra damage. Which means a lot when you're doing that extra one damage thousands of times a minute. But if you'd rather solve the problems at the end of your barrage instead of the beginning, thin drum walls will reduce the cooling rate of your weapon, allowing you to return to firing much quicker. And due to the thin drum walls of thinned drum walls, you manage to cram an extra 300 ammunition into your gun. You'd think Gunner would be smart enough to always use these drums since they wouldn't affect the other overclocks, but that's way too much thinking for a single dwarf. But do you know what doesn't require thinking? Fire! With burning hell, your muzzle flashes turn into muzzle fryers. All of the excess heat generated from your combustion is forced out of the barrels of your gun, causing anything unfortunate enough to be in front of you to burst into flames. 
It's certainly fun to run bugs down with your projectile spitting flamethrower, but all that fire causes your minigun to overheat a fair bit faster, so make sure whatever you're shooting at dies before it can enact its revenge. It's not all fire and brimstone in the gunner's kit. Sometimes you just want some extra ammo. With compact feed mechanism, your ammo count is increased by a whopping 800 rounds! Unfortunately, the smaller mechanisms are rather delicate, so your fire rate suffers a little less to not rattle your gun to pieces. Now we have a bit of a damage boost. Exhaust vectoring uses the power of engineering to coax an extra 2 damage out of your rounds. As I described earlier, a little damage goes a long way when spewing a sundering tsunami of steel. So how did the devs of Deep Rock manage to balance this? They multiplied your bullet spread by two and a half times. With a spread this wide, you may consider treating your minigun more like a rotary shotgun and shoving it in the abdomen of any encroaching aliens. Bullet Hell takes a different approach to the overclock scene. Instead of increasing your damage or ammo count, it opts to take down targets using angles and a little bit of sorcery. Your minigun gains the magical power of ricocheting bullets 75% of the time. What? How is that magical? Bullets ricochet all the time in movies and probably real life. That is correct. But these ricochets hunt down anything that isn't dwarvish. And don't think your ammo's xenophobia is going to protect you. If any adversaries are sneaking up behind you, your ballistics won't hesitate to go straight through you to reach their destination. This makes bullet hell exceptionally efficient at ripping you to ribbons. By the way, trying to land all your shots won't help you avoid turning yourself into a colander for blood. Not only do the bullets ricochet off of malicious meat, but also this overclock makes your spread roughly the circumference of mercury. So your efforts would be futile regardless. And rounding out the lead storm, we have lead storm. <gasps> That's the name of the weapon! Oh my god! This overclock has the highest damage increase with a plus four to each of your bullets. You may be thinking that that's pretty powerful, and you'd be right. So powerful, in fact, that you're gonna have to brace yourself whenever you fire. And because of how viciously you're vomiting bullets, they don't have the same stunning power as usual. That's an acceptable sacrifice, but being unable to move while firing starts to present some problems. There are a multitude of machines, equipment, and wildlife you can use to circumvent this encumbrance, but if you have the energy to not be stuck to your stairlift, you can b-hop around while tap-firing your minigun. I'm sure there's a way to do this with more skill and finesse, but we have 32 more overclocks to look at and I'm not spending the next 5 hours perfecting my genocidal hopscotch. Now it's time for the Thunderhead Heavy Auto Cannon. Starting off simple, we have composite drums. Using lighter metals to fuel our escapades allow us to carry an extra 110 ammo. But that's not all. With these extra light ammo drums, you can reload half a second faster. You know what that means, more bullets for more carnage. Splintering Shells takes a look at the itty bitty explosions your ammo produces and opts to improve their underperforming AoE. By constructing your bullets out of less stable materials, they rupture on impact, sending shrapnel in every direction faster than ever before. Because of this, these miniature grenades have a slight damage increase as well as a larger radius in which they affect. But this specific brand of bullet is still intended to hit its target before covering its face with burning metal. With Carpet Bomber, you throw out the aiming strategy entirely. Your custom-engineered HE rounds are going to devastate the landscape as well as anything that walks upon it. What that means in nerdy mechanical speak is that your explosion's damage and radius are significantly increased. Though, since your bullets are designed to obliterate themselves the second they make contact with anything and not after they've pierced a carapace, your damage is reduced by about half. I suppose that doesn't really matter when you're hitting every target with every shot. Though not all overclocks are about damage and ammo. Some are about speed. Combat mobility makes an effort to reduce almost every Thunderhead mechanic that is slowing you down. While you are using this behemoth, the movement penalty you suffer is significantly reduced, the base spread of your weapon is smaller, you start out shooting faster, and reach your top speed of death dispensing 50% quicker. With all these speed buffs, I'm half tempted to build full attack speed and see how many bullets this baby can fire. Oh. Right. The downside is that all this mobility and ease of use is because your magazine is half the weight and size. And I can't be bothered to change that. But what I can change is this. Equipping damage resistance at full Roth, yes, that is its name and I know what Roth stands for, gives me the durability of a Tiger One armored combat vehicle when I'm firing at max speed. Since you reach maximum fire rate exceptionally fast, you'll be the tankiest bastard in the game. Until you have to reload. Maybe I should have gotten the high capacity mags. Another overclock with this halved mag size is Big Bertha. Though, instead of it being from speed and efficiency, it's from your bullets taking up twice the space. Because of this, the miniature meteors you fire out deal an extra 12 damage and their overwhelming weight makes them travel in a straighter line. Though, other downsides of packing your backpack with railroad spikes instead of bullets is that you can't carry as many and your top rate of fire is significantly hindered. Turns out loading the wrong caliber of bullets is going to cause some problems. 
You know what else causes some problems? Being choked to death by a cloud of toxic chemicals. Though in this situation, that's mainly the bug's problem. Neurotoxin Payload allows you to channel your inner war criminal by replacing your bullets with explosive canisters filled with whatever this vile substance is that causes open circulatory systems to spontaneously collapse. The Neurotoxin only takes hold half the time, but with the amount of cartridges you're expending, that shouldn't matter. What is worth noting is that this effect can be applied through the AoE of the Thunderhead, accentuated by its increase in radius. With that in mind, I'd follow the Overclock's example, ditch the damage, increase the blast radius, and wash the environment with noxious fumes. Rounding out the primaries and leveling out the horde is the Hurricane Guided Rocket System. Eh, uh, on second thought, that guided part isn't really necessary. Manual Guidance Cutoff gives you the option to send your missiles careening into the distance without you having to stare at one spot for 10 seconds. By releasing the trigger, all of your active missiles stop listening to you and fly off in whatever direction they were heading. And you shouldn't have to worry too much about if their target wanders out of the rocket's path. For some reason, we replace the fuel of your rockets with a compound that burns faster, allowing for greater speeds to be achieved. You'd think we'd add this stuff to all of your ammo, but we've established that logic is a bit too difficult for dwarves to handle. Oh, and a quick side note. Shooting after you've abandoned some missiles will not make them start listening to you. You've crushed their hopes and dreams by letting them go, and now they'll never come back no matter how many times you leave an open can of rocket fuel on the porch and go, Rocket! Oh, there you are! Overtuned feed mechanism improves the rate at which each individual missile is loaded into the firing mechanism of your handheld SAM. Since the Hurricane has a much lower fire rate than the other two primaries, this plus one makes a world of difference. This overclock also uses a slightly less volatile version of the fuel from manual guidance cutoff, giving you extra max velocity. With the speed at which you are going to dispense maneuverable missiles, you'll have all the spray and no need to pray. Now if your accuracy is subpar like my own, you may want to avoid aiming reliance as much as possible. With Fragmentation Missiles, we've increased the density of your missile's casings. This means that more energy is required to rupture these rockets, giving you a plus 2 damage increase to your explosions. On top of that, the increased pressure within these rockets causes a larger explosion to be created, so any worries you may have about aiming should be alleviated. But if you'd rather spend more time tracking the enemy, let me show you Plasma Burster Missiles. Now, when I was first reading this overclock, I didn't know what to expect. Almost every single stat that is buffed by the other overclocks is dramatically reduced. All it had going for it was this turn rate boost of all things, and whatever these plasma missiles were. The flavor text said Plasma Apocalypse, so I figured it would cover the ground with plasma similar to the Breach Cutter's trail. So, I was a bit off. The Plasma Burster missiles don't exactly burst. Instead, they penetrate through their target with enough vigor for many more rounds. And that's where the turn radius comes in. Because after it pierces a target, you may still be looking at the same enemy, so it will pop a UE and keep on assaulting your cursor until it runs out of juice. I'd love to tell you that these rockets can penetrate five times, but your missiles can make bad turns and just kill themselves on the granite, so it's hard to tell. Mine Layer System also uses the strategy of completely changing the nature of your missiles. All of the fancy pants electronics for the guiding system were gutted and replaced with a delayed detonator. Now none of your missiles will follow your orders, but if they land in some rock or even stone, they will become makeshift landmines. It takes about one second for the missiles to convert to mines and they will stick around until an enemy gets too close or roughly 15 seconds have elapsed. You can still pretend that these rockets are normal, but the overall damage is less. Oh, and you're missing about a mag's worth of ammunition. Maybe the tech is a bit heavier and Gunner can't be bothered to carry those extra 36 rockets. Now we have the unstable overclocks! Starting with Jet Fuel Homebrew, we are going to be replacing our propellant with Grandpappy's failed batch of moonshine for some mixed results. It certainly burns well enough, but it's ironically too stable to make a good explosion, so the blast radius and AoE damage are both reduced. On top of that, I'm pretty sure we kept some of the booze for ourselves and we're only able to store it in our ammo bag, so we're running 72 missiles lighter. We'll just load our magazines with less rockets and pretend they're full. On the plus side, the unbelievably quick rate at which the fuel burns causes the rockets to reach maximum velocity the second they leave your gun. And I don't mean your standard maximum velocity. The jet fuel homebrew causes your missiles to travel 50% faster than their not drunk counterparts. And for all my physics sticklers out there, you'll be happy to know that the increased speed of the rockets causes their direct impact damage to increase by over double the base damage. Congratulations, Grandpappy, you've successfully turned my surface-to-air missile launcher into a Thunderhead Heavy Autocannon. And for the final primary overclock, we have Salvo Mode. 
Believe it or not, but there are no changes for your rocket on this one. Your precious damage, blast radius, ammo, guidance, and other things are completely untouched. Unless you hold down the trigger, of course. Trying to fire this weapon as if it's automatic will jam your barrels and let you charge up to 9 shots. Releasing the trigger at any time will cause whatever missiles you stored to release outward in a wide spread with no guidance from your cursor. Each missile added to the barrage prologue will increase the damage of each individual projectile. This means that dumping a full salvo into a Praetorian is much more effective than tickling them with 9 consecutive shots. Just make sure you are actually close enough to land everything. As you know, Gunner was the first video that I ended up doing in two parts. That was not supposed to become the standard for the series, but it happened anyway when I kept hitting six or seven pages on three weapons. This video specifically was the start of me trying to equalize my audio by listening to every individual syllable and adjusting the volume accordingly. Welcome back to Gunner. Again. I've kept you waiting long enough to see these secondaries, so let's skip the pleasantries and resume where we left off. Right after I shill my Patreon, give me your money. Now it's time for the big hitters, the boss killers, the blood spillers, the pistols. Starting out our squadron of sidearms is the go-to choice for any wannabe cowboy, the Bulldog Heavy Revolver. And what better way to encapsulate the Wild West than some good old ricochets? With chain hit, there's a 75% chance that any weak point hits will somehow bounce off the target's gooey insides. It looks cool and does damage, don't question it. In true western fashion, the bouncy bullets will find another target and it will hurt like hell. Yes, that quantifier of pain was necessary to establish, because like bullet hell for the minigun, if you find yourself stuck between a glyphid and a hard place, also known as another glyphid, you will shoot yourself in the spleen. Now if you'd rather put your safety and combat efficiency in the hands of RNG instead of battle positioning, homebrew powder is the overclock for you. We've dipped your bullets in a varnish made of leprechaun blood and four-leafed clover extract, so now your damage is randomized. You can do anything between 75% and 2 times damage. This means that you're going to do a lot more damage on average, perfect for asserting your dominance over the locals. You know what? That's too much gambling for my taste. I want a sick damage boost that happens on my terms. Volatile Bullets does just that. Replacing the lead of your ammo with a magnesium thermite compound results in your bullets being more fragile and thus doing less damage. But, landing your shots against a burning target causes the compound to react, resulting in PLUS 300% DAMAGE! So equip your fire minigun and pack your molotovs, because we have some bugs to burn. Next is Six Shooter, and it's exactly what you'd expect. You somehow managed to cram six bullets into this four cylinder, for a little extra carnage before you have to reload. Because of your bloated cylinder, it takes a little more time to reload, but your fire rate is increased so you can fan the hammer to clear out whatever tried to exploit that time. You do have a 50% higher base spread though, so aim with care. The extra 6 max ammo for this overclock won't save you from trying to snipe with a revolver. That's Elephant Round's job. Instead of your base spread being 50% higher, it's 50% lower. To properly establish this overclock's relation to a sniper rifle, you load your cylinder with 50 caliber rounds for an epic 2 times damage. And just like any other one-handed sniper rifle being hip-fired, your recoil and spread per shot are absolute garbage. That tends to happen when you pack bullets that are longer than the gun they are for. Other problems with packing inhaler-sized light accelerators include less ammo, longer reload time, and smaller cylinders. But that doesn't matter when you shove your barrel into the enemy's glowy bits. <laughs> Lastly, we have another ricochet overclock. Though, unlike all the other ones, it actually acknowledges the supernatural properties of your ammunition. Magic bullets defies all laws of physics and ricochets into nearby enemies. Because these bullets are designed to bounce and not to penetrate, your damage is reduced by 20! Oh ho ho, you're lucky that you give me an extra 8 ammo and I can use the ricochet to avoid having to play Ring Around the Rosie with a dreadnought. Or if you want to use the ricochet to inflict death upon multiple beings, you can load explosive rounds with neurotoxin coating to administer multiple doses of death. Adding a bit more speed to our secondaries is the Burt 7 Burst Fire Gun. Now, I'm not sure if you've noticed in the last 7 seconds how much ammo this weapon tends to consume, but it's a rather large amount. At least, that's the case when you've engineered your pistol to eject a quarter of its magazine with a single click. Composite Casings endorses this mag dumping behavior by being the only Burt overclock to increase your fire rate. And if that plus one isn't a good enough reason for you, Composite Casings gives you an extra 36 rounds for you to waste at your leisure. But maybe you don't want to inject a small militia's worth of 45s into the flesh and sediment of anything around you. Maybe you just want a bit more damage to make every hit you land sting a little more. Full Chamber Seal tightens up the construction of your burst pistol to propel your bullets forward with a tiny bit more power behind it. The streamlined design also allows you to reload faster, because if the first barrage doesn't get the job done, the second one will rip the job in half. Now I don't know about you guys, but my aiming skills are… not exactly fantastic. Hopefully compact mags will alleviate the accuracy deficiency by tapping your foot so hard that it does this to your aim. 
Yes, this is a frequent problem, and no, I will not try to stop it. R&D has thinned the metal of your magazines as much as they possibly could, giving you enough space in your bag for a whopping 84 extra ammo. Now if you find yourself missing shots because your heel is trying to jackhammer through the floor, you'll have plenty of bullets to spare. Though, it is worth noting that these thin magazines are about as sturdy as a gingerbread house, so you're gonna have to take your time while reloading and won't be able to fire as fast. You know what? I'm not the biggest fan of extra ammo. I understand how having more is better, but I'd rather just kill things extra deader. With experimental rounds, you embrace this mentality by losing 30 ammo for an epic damage boost. Now whatever you're looking at will perish before you have time to miss. These extra chonky bullets take up more space though, so your mag size is decreased as well. At least it's not as low as Electro Minelets. With this overclock, your mag size is reduced by 12, and for a good reason. No, not because of mechanical balancing, it's because you loaded your magazine with lightning grenades. These minelets in question can be treated like standard ammunition, with a slight damage reduction of course, but impacting the ground causes them to evolve into their next stage. These glowing balls will hang out until they get stepped on or get bored, resulting in an explosion of electricity. Anything in the blast radius of these tiny tempests is inflicted with the electrocuted status effect, making them slow, sad, and and mildly irritated. Now if you're a true fan of the more is more philosophy, micro flechettes will have you overburdened by ammunition abundance. We've replaced the standard ammunition of the Burt with a plethora of dart-like projectiles. They're rather small, so your damage is dramatically reduced, but their lightweight convenience allows for a grossly overstuffed magazine and exceedingly manageable recoil and spread. But that's not all. With such a low weight, you are able to carry an extra lunchbox's worth of ammunition, resulting in double your maximum ammo capacity. I would tell you how this is tactically advantageous, but I just use this overclock as an excuse to shoot my Burt more often. And rounding out the Burt's overclocks is my personal favorite, Lead Spray. We've replaced the gunpowder of your bullets with whatever juices inside detonators. Now your bullets are fired out harder than ever before. With the increased forces behind your projectile, you deal an extra 50% damage, meaning any bugs in your area will be converted into a liquid. Though controlling such a high level of combustion does result in some decrease in accuracy. Using this overclock gives your weapon a four times spread? Oh, 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 you think you can stop me? I am a practitioner of the legendary art sniper and mouth no jitsu. Your spread means nothing to me when I'm pulling the trigger halfway down a Praetorian's esophagus. And for our final gunner weapon, we have the wave clearer itself, the arms core coil gun. This particle accelerator is notorious for its ability to pierce through just about everything. That makes it exceptionally good at hitting an entire swarm with a single charge. If only your status effects were as wide reaching. Oh wait, Reatomizer washes whatever negative effects a foe may have across any adversaries behind it. This spreads your status effects across oxies like an epidemic of flames, toxins, and whatever curses your friends may bring along as well. You are still penetrating through your foes with a metal rod though, so it may be a little difficult to proc without coring your enemy's cranium. Now if you don't want to spread a plague of aerosolized tetrodotoxin but still want to exploit your AoE, Ultramagnetic Coils upgrades the superheated air in your wake from annoying to environmental hazard. The diameter of this column of cinders balloons out an extra meter to cover as much cave as possible. On top of that, the trail lingers for an extra second, making anything stuck inside forced to relocate or discover what it feels like to boil inside an air fryer. Don't worry my ammo hoarders, I didn't forget about you. This time. Backfeeding module stores excess energy created by the coil gun, resulting in 320 extra ammo. This system is taking more than it's supposed to though, so you're going to take a noticeable dip. But if you're choosing this overclock, then you don't care. You just want your weapon to be in one of two states, firing or reloading. Or you're just a normal person and you don't want to resupply every two seconds. The mole is the obligatory damage boost overclock for the coil gun. But instead of it being a flat damage increase at the cost of everything you know and love, this overclock requires kiting, positioning, object permanence, communication if applicable, and the ability to use your eyeballs. Why are all these things important for a damage boost? Because your damage boost effectiveness is directly proportional to how much granite you penetrate. And don't worry too much about the downside. With the decreased shard speed, you have plenty of time to guess where to fire next. You can be lame and just use a random stalagmite to do a little extra damage, or you can use your greatly increased penetration power to assassinate an ally two miles away. Now if you remember the reatomizer overclock from earlier, which I assume you do, you dory-brained goof, you'll recall that you needed to do some setup before you could spread status effects. With Hellfire, you choose to ignore other weapons and flex your own burning abilities. The supersonic projectile you fire can now ignite anything within 2 meters of it with blistering speed. Get it? Because blistering occurs when flesh is subject to intense heat? The excess heat this pulse produces also increases the trail radius, but this is simply for a wider ignition range since the trail lasts 2 seconds less. And due to the focus of this overclock being damage over time, your ammo and charge speed are reduced as well. It's not that big of a deal since bugs will be suffering from your flames during your increased charge. 
Finally, we have Triple Tech Chambers. We've implemented a completely different system for capturing excess energy. Instead of converting it into ammo for later, you get a brief window to discharge it immediately. You can do this up to two times per shot, but the time you have to follow it up is extremely short, so you might as well just treat it like a burst rifle and avoid aiming the two extra shots. Okay, maybe you should aim enough to counteract the increased recoil. Due to how your coil gun processes the energy you pump into it, your reload speed is increased and your charge speed is decreased, so make sure your triple shot clears the cave. The Driller primary video mainly contained instances of me establishing my identity to both you and myself. I acknowledge that I'm an edutainment channel, so I started to do research outside of the game itself to apply real-world factoids to this funny game about capitalist space dwarves. I also established tropes I would use in most of my videos. I started implementing gags using filters, subtly not subtly reminding you to subscribe to ExplosiveT-5 on YouTube.com, especially since they have almost reached 10,000 subscribers, making the genuine reactions to my own puns more prevalent, and trying to use my knowledge of random movies to provide fun visuals and references. I also started to move the eyes on my character because I felt it needed a bit more personality, especially since I've had very little time to work on its replacement. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Where were we? All right. Welcome back to Driller, the forefront of founding new and innovative ways to reduce your team's headcount. Maybe while you're doing that, you'll kill some bugs as well. And what better way to exterminate arachnids than pressurized napalm, nitrogen, and fluoroantimonic acid? That's right, we're busting out the science words today, so put on your chemical-resistant gear and let's get into it. Starting off is the CRISPR flamethrower, and like most other weapons, it has an ammo overclock. Lighter Tanks uses a less dense alloy to store your fuel, resulting in you being able to carry an extra 75 units of future fire. If you're a coward, just take an extra resupply, Gunner isn't gonna use it. I'm sorry to the, like, 12 people who enjoy Lighter Tanks, I just have a vendetta against ammo increases since they cut into my damage numbers. But do you know what doesn't? Sticky additive. With this ooey gooey engine fuel, your fire adheres to everything a bit easier, causing your ground fires to last longer and raw flames to deal extra damage since the gas itself is stuck to your enemy's carapace. If you've ever experienced boiling liquid getting stuck to your skin, you know exactly what these bugs are going through. But instead of it being hot bacon grease, it's industrial paste burning at 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, I use freedom units. God bless America. Moving over to the balanced overclocks, we have another ammo increase. Compact feed valves lessens the size of critical components within your weapon so you can store more fuel in each tank. Not only does this mean you can spew fire for longer, but it also means you have more fuel in total. And if you really want to get the most bang for your buck, you can equip the Heat Radiance modification. With an increase in tank size and willingness to use it, everything around you will start rising in temperature without any respite to douse their flames. The problem is that liquids are heavy, so reloading takes a bit longer due to the added weight in your tanks. Additionally, the valves that we shrunk are not just for show. They play a key part in properly regulating fuel line pressure. Since their abilities have been neutered, your stream of flames is now 2 meters shorter. Look, it's not my fault the game uses the metric system. On the other hand, Fuel Stream Diffuser uses pressure to its fullest. Instead of just dribbling fire out the nozzle, it blocks the stream slightly, causing flames to soar an extra 5 meters. It's the same thing that happens when you stick your finger in a garden hose. No, do not stick your finger in a flamethrower to achieve long-range arson. Because the stream is being interfered with, less flammable liquid is being used in any given moment. Translation, your fire rate is reduced. That wasn't supposed to be a pun. Ugh, my brain is melting. Wait, no! Face Melter is our true introduction to the damage capabilities of the flamethrower. The flavor text claims these changes are from some expert fiddling of gizmos, but let's not dramatize R&D's contribution. All they did is swap out the fuel for something a bit more spicy. The viscosity of this new substance is much thinner than your base fuel, allowing it to flow out of your fire hose much easier at the cost of some range. And because of how volatile your new fuel is, the amount you can store in each tank is reduced, but your total fuel count is not affected. And let's not forget the selling point of this overclock. With Face Melter, your damage is increased when dealt to things unfortunate enough to be caught in your spray. Because you're going to be staring bugs down with the business end of a flamethrower, I'd recommend using the creatively named modification Targets Explode. With this, enemies have a 50% chance to explode on death, dealing significant damage in a radius around them. The catch is that this effect only happens if they die from direct damage, making Face Melter the perfect candidate to blow up some bugs. For the final flamethrower overclock, we go from dealing direct damage to taking the most hands-off approach you can imagine. And I'm not talking about setting enemies on fire and then watching them burn. I'm talking about igniting the floor and then going AFK. Oh sick, I lived! 
Sticky fuel replaces the gasoline from your flamethrower with a thick sludge. Because of this fluid's girth, your tank and fuel capacity is reduced. But don't worry, this fuel is more than efficient. The napalm you administer to the feet of your foes lingers on the ground for an extra 6 seconds. Additionally, the goo gets stuck to their toesy woesies, adding a separate instance of damage over time. But that's not all. If you know your way around the CRISPR, you may remember that there are two mods for increasing sticky flame duration and another mod for slowing down enemies on your flaming turf. Mix these powers together and you have 14 seconds of flaming terrain with enough heat to grind any assault to a standstill. While inside the danger zone! Thank goodness CC isn't a common occurrence throughout the Driller's Kit or else these hostiles would be in some serious danger. Oh wait, the Cryo Cannon is the king of hard CC with its freeze ability being our Natarel. The question now is, how do you go about inflicting it? With improved thermal efficiency, you choose to inflict this icy curse by spraying as much material as possible. Specifically, this overclock increases pressure drop rate, meaning this little needle goes down slower, allowing for more consistent hosing of ice. Since you are more likely to use a little too much liquid nitrogen, your tank capacity is increased so you don't squander your resources as quickly. Toon Cooler uses a much more entertaining approach to the freezing objective. Instead of unleashing a stable stream of ice, this overclock increases your flow rate, allowing for more sub-zero liquid to drench your target. Naturally, this would accelerate how quickly something solidifies, but it gets better. Toon Cooler also increases your cannon's inherent ability to freeze, meaning you are making ice sculptures extra extra fast. Tragically, there are some downsides. Starting up the cryo cannon takes a little bit longer, and your pressure gain rate is reduced by 50%. That's when this little needle goes in the other direction. If these consequences are a little too intense for you, then I highly recommend equipping the Fragile modification and then making your judgement. Fragile makes it so that every instance of damage from your freeze thrower has a chance to do massive damage to any frozen enemies in your way. The actual numbers for it are complicated and depend on how hurt your victim is and how high the hazard level is. It's good regardless. Since Tuned Cooler has the highest freeze and hit rate of the cryo cannon overclocks, you'll be cracking carapace before your frostbite sets in. Flow rate expansion has the same flow rate increase as the previous overclock, but unlike Tuned Cooler, this increases from wider pipes and loosened valves. Because of this, your chamber depressurizes extremely quickly. To balance this, your cannon repressurizes even faster, making the pressure gauge dance and any gap in damage trivial. Now we're getting into some of the more wacky overclocks. Uh, ignore that this one is still considered balanced. It's unstable at heart. Ice Spear adds an additional mechanic to your cryo cannon. Pressing the reload button with this overclock equipped opens the valves and dumps an excessive amount of fluid directly into the turbine. Doing this solidifies the spill into a massive hunk of ice that is catapulted out of the mechanism. This projectile does roughly a bajillion damage, so it's exceptional at popping anything that you'd rather not deal with. Just make sure nothing is around when you use this ability, because it immediately drops your pressure to zero and this overclock increases how long it takes for your chamber to start repressurizing. Something also worth noting is that it requires 50 units of fluid to perform this action, so you may want to use it sparingly. Ice Storm is the token damage overclock that we all know and love. With this upgrade, your damage is doubled for twice the thermal action. On top of that, your cannon spews out small chunks of ice, further increasing your damage against frozen targets specifically. I guess non-crystalline glyphids are immune to the effects of tiny rocks hitting them. This aggressive assault of ice cubes is considered kinetic damage instead of cold, probably because the freezing fluid has already solidified. Because a good portion of your resources are freezing inside your weapon, there's less cold available to be transferred to your enemies. This results in not only decreased freezing power, but also less space for liquid nitrogen to be stored. And if decreased tank capacity wasn't enough for you, the chamber depressurizes a lot quicker, making every torrent of ice just a little sadder. But need I remind you, this overclock, at worst, deals double damage. Who cares what the downsides are? That's just awesome! Snowball decides to be a little more complex than just holding down Mouse 1. Similar to its destructive brother Ice Spear, Snowball replaces your reload key with a new mechanic. When activated, the pressure chamber is emptied into the turbine. Though unlike Ice Spear, the freezing fluid doesn't condense in time and is sent careening into the distance. This ball of sub-zero material doesn't do much damage, but when it impacts it splashes freezing mist in every direction, encasing anything unfortunate enough to be nearby. It's safe to say that most things hit by this are frozen instantly, but some big bastards are denser than others and can handle the blistering cold. That's where the SECRET STATUS EFFECT comes in. I did mention it a bit in my last video, but I was completely wrong. You should still go watch the video anyway, it's good! What Lingering Cold actually does is maintain a small DOT so that if you leave a pops collapse frozen it won't start thawing for a bit. Now if you really want to spend a quarter of your freezer fluid trying to stop a juggernaut for a single second, you can! 
It is worth noting that Lingering Cold doesn't do anything to targets that are already frozen, so don't wait too long while your attackers thaw, especially since you only have so much fluid in your tank. Oh, did I mention that earlier? The Snowball Overclock has the highest ammo reduction of the Cryo Cannon. Thankfully, this overclock once again differs from Ice Spear, this time in its consumption rate. While Ice Spear consumes 50 units of fluid for every frozen javelin, Snowball only consumes 25 per watt of frost. This more than makes up for the decreased tank capacity. Oh, but you do have the same plus one repressurization delay. Lastly, we have everyone's favorite nightmare device, the Corrosive Sludge Pump. What, do you think Nightmare was a bit too strong of a descriptor for it? Let's get through the first overclock and you'll see what I mean. Hydrogen Ion Additive is a special concoction we've dumped into our sludge vat. Whenever one of our globs impacts against a target, the additive activates, further amplifying the corrosive capabilities of your projectile. Along with eroding the carapace of your victim, the sludge also starts eating away at their tendons, causing them to slowly limp towards you as they dissolve into the Viridian Haze. See, I told you, nightmarish. And yes, I know it's not a Viridian and more of a lime, shut up, it sounded cool. AG Mixture stands for Anti-Gravity Mixture? Sure, because we definitely wanted this stuff lingering around in the air. With how light these piles of acid already are, combined with less gravity and more velocity, launching this stuff makes it travel in basically a straight line. This adds a significant range boost to the sludge pump and puts the other driller primaries to shame. There's just something so delightfully cursed about taking down a sniper with your point-blank wave clear. Volatile Impact Mixture gets us back on track and focuses on your AoE. More specifically, and importantly, the damage of it. The compound at your disposal in this overclock burns extremely quickly, resulting in double the damage to both your regular and charge shots. Unfortunately, this quick chemical reaction causes the substance to denature at an accelerated rate. This means the corrosive status effect ends sooner and your puddles evaporate faster. All in all, great damage in the short term and depressing in the long. For the next overclock, we've got to talk about the corrosive sludge pump's charge shot. Holding down the fire button congeals a thick wad of slime before catapulting it towards your foes. On impact with anything that's solid, the clumps shatter into multiple fragments, littering the cave with toxic ground hazards. These piles of acid function the same as just shooting the floor, but with the added bonus of providing more melting mounts compared to the ammo consumed. With Disperser Compound, the shattering of your charge shot is much more efficient, causing them to erupt in even more fragments. Though, it's worth noting that the unstable structure of the charge shot results in a significant damage reduction to said projectile. Conversely, the haphazard corrosive shrapnel deals bonus damage if it lands on an unfortunate aggressor. You've basically turned your sludge pump into a launcher of acidic frag grenades. Goo Bomber Special also modifies your charge shot. You know those obnoxious Mactera that hemorrhage their adhesive fluids all over the place? We're taking a page out of their book and modifying your charge shot to function the same way. As the projectile flies through the sky, it rains down corrosive sludge. These acidic thwomps are the fragments of the charge shot since it doesn't explode on impact. This distinction is important because your fragments deal extra damage if they land on something that's still moving, and your fragment count is increased by 50%. Additionally, every puddle you create lasts longer, making your ionized remodeling of the cave floor a lot less temporary than the tenants would like. Naturally, you'll equip mods that increase your puddle size and duration, but the tier 5s are the mods you really want to pay attention to. Protein Disruption Mix is naturally fantastic, with the corrosive compounds slowing down the enemy advances like the first overclock. But my personal preference is its counterpart. Remember that long word from earlier? Oral antimonic acid. Yeah, that one. That means your weapon is launching mini-fridge-sized globs of the strongest acid known to man. I don't know if you realize this, but I'm technically an edutainment channel, so I'm about to edutain you. You know how acid works in movies where anything touched by it is instantly turned into a quivering pile of slime? Well, fluoroantimonic acid is the real-life equivalent to that. Eating through cloth, glass, steel, flesh, and bone, it's a wonder how dwarves don't suffer the same fate as your foes when traversing this sludge-ridden wasteland. Finally, we have Sludge Blast, and once again, we'll focus on the charge shots. This overclock replaces your single glob of condensed goo into a shotgun blast of burning matter. Since all the balls are launched simultaneously, they are all considered charge shots and not fragments. This means the damage is dramatically increased even though your charge shot damage is cut in half. You can use these numbers along with the double charge shot velocity to eradicate a wave from overhead or afar. But the main draw is for use against larger prey. Caressing large enemies with the nozzle of your sludge pump before firing lets every pellet of slime collide with your target. On its own, this is enough to seriously damage anything in front of you, but with a slower reload and less ammo, you may not have the resources to finish off the behemoth you pissed off. Thankfully, we're playing Driller! The sludge they're covered in is just as corrosive as always, so there is a decent chance your victim succumbs to your DOT and is erased from the game.
With the Driller secondary video, I tried to elevate my editing to a higher standard. I lowered the volume so that my audio wouldn't be distorted as much when uploading to YouTube and its volume cap, and I tried implementing transitions whenever it seemed appropriate. For that last one, I actually tried to put a transition between every single clip, but the result was nauseating and didn't really work for my content like it does for Maxor. I ended up removing most of the transitions, but kept anything that I could justify. The result is a video with the most amount of transitions on my channel. It had an ad placement, but I removed it for your viewing pleasure. Welcome back to Driller, the only dwarf who realized that the Geneva suggestions don't apply to creatures with the average IQ of a toaster. Today we'll be looking at the one-handed weapons that don't have a risk of disintegration on contact. Instead, misuse of these weapons will cause your flesh to boil off of your bones. The Sabat is here too. Before we begin, it's important to mention that, unlike the other classes, the secondaries for Driller are designed to be used in conjunction with the primaries, more specifically the Sabata and Wavecookcraft modifications that specifically synergize with the effects caused by the primaries, and the EPC's heat generation on Burning Nightmare changes its function depending on the primary in use. Some of these are simple, like volatile bullets dealing extra damage to burning targets, exothermic reactor triggering temperature shock, and the plasma charger setting sludge on fire. But others are a bit more complex, like Neurocorrosive Toxic Catalyst and Contagion Transmitter inflicting additional DOTs to targets covered in acid, or the Neurotoxin Status Effect. Since the modifications are very specific to the type of damage you're dealing, make sure you swap them out whenever you change primaries. With that out of the way, let's start this slaughter. Starting off is the only instance of Ballistics in Driller's kit, the Sabata 120. Because of this, crits actually matter for once, and what better way to welcome these headshots than their very own overclock? With Chain Hit, every time you land one of these Brain Busters, there's a 75% chance that the bullet will make a U-turn and seek out an additional target. On the other side of the clean overclocks, we have a familiar face. Homebrew Powder works the same as its counterpart for the Bulldog Heavy Revolver, except this time your minimum is higher and your maximum is lower, meaning your random damage is more consistent, hence why it's a clean overclock instead of a balanced. But what is balanced is Oversized Magazine. It's not stated anywhere, but there is secretly a powerful illusion spell cast on your mags when using this overclock to make them look like nothing has changed. But in reality, they are almost double the size. With an additional 10 bullets per barrage, this is the only Sabata overclock that benefits your mag size. It's a good thing too, because with all the extra invisible weight, your reload is slower. I also forgot to mention that this is the only balanced overclock for the Sabata. You know what that means. Three unstable overclocks! Automatic fire replaces your semi-auto nature with... No more single shot for this sidearm. We're going full bullet vomit and the only thing stopping us is my reluctance to get expanded ammo bags. As is customary when converting your weapon into a Glock, your rate of fire has been increased. Naturally, this means your recoil is also increased. It shouldn't be by too much though. Combine that with an increased base spread and your spray pattern will be roughly as wide as Raid Shadow Legend's Sphere of Influence. Anyway, next on our roster of contortions to critical components, we have Explosive Reload. By adding a simple remote explosive to the heart of each bullet, we can build a stockpile of mines within the bodies of our targets. Upon reloading our weapon, the charges will detonate, obliterating all important parts of their victim. You know, like their muscles, organs, nervous system, will to live, and even their soul. This is only visualized by them popping like zits, though. Because of how powerful this delayed burst of damage is, your maximum ammo count and magazine size are reduced. The ammo capacity is tragic, but understandable from a balanced perspective. Additionally, the mag size isn't necessarily bad since you'll be using your overclock's main feature more often. Speaking of using it more, while I was recording I realized that I could equip blowthrough rounds and double the amount of mines I was distributing. Don't think too hard about the physics of it and just accept that it's cool. Our final overclock for the Sabata is… Wait, what's that? Do I hear the pitter-patter of dozens of people commenting on how Born Ready synergizes with this overclock? First of all, let me know if I got you in the comments. And second, that's right! Equipping the Born Ready perk forces your dwarves to reload while your weapon is holstered. Since your weapon basically doesn't exist while it's off-screen, this prevents you from blasting your targets early, so stack some charges and give these bugs a first-class trip to hell. Our final overclock for the Sabata, for realsies this time, is Tranquilizer Rounds. You've submerged your bullets in a vat of fast-acting, low-duration horse tranquilizer. Now every time you poke a problem, there's a 50% chance to stun them. Though some creatures are immune to your aggressive sleep inducers, so there's a slowing effect inflicted as well. Since your magazine size and rate of fire are both reduced, you're most likely just going to use this to keep battles in whatever ground-based maledictions you have laid out. That or get them to stop moving so you can execute them easier. Now we have the Experimental Plasma Charger. And before I confuse the daylights out of you, it's worth noting that the EPC has a charge shot mechanic. 
Holding down the fire button will condense your energy into a powerful ball of plasma that changes depending on what overclock we use, along with a lot of the modifications. Charging this ball heats up your weapon and can completely fry the thing if you don't release your trigger on time. Now that we have that established, we can get into the overclocks. And not a moment too soon, since energy rerouting already tampers with the charge mechanics. Pumping power into the... Uh, we'll just call this a barrel for the moment, is more efficient, increasing your charge speed by 50%. Since this reduces how much power is lost in the process, your usable energy is increased by 16. That means your ammo is increased. Magnetic cooling unit shifts our focus from preemptive charge shot bonuses to post-shot buffs. When you are powering up a Mega Blast, you can stay in the red for longer without breaking your weapon. Additionally, your cooling rate is increased. This means you can fire more before turning your circuits into firecrackers. And if you do overheat your weapon, it takes less time to return it to battle-ready status. And contrary to that overclock, we have Heat Pipe. This overclock tries to bring us all the power all the time. This results in way too much heat being generated both after charging and successfully unleashing a charge shot. But the benefit of this overzealous heat production is that our charge shot powers up faster. And since the system is always primed and ready, the amount of energy you end up spending on said charge shots is decreased. Now you can do more with the price of less. Heavy Hitter is an anomaly among the Plasma Charger overclocks since it has nothing to do with the charge shot. That's like a third of its name. Instead, this exile focuses on amplifying your normal shot damage. It's not a minuscule modification either. With this overclock, each projectile is like a tiny flaming freight train trying to rearrange the atoms of anything in front of you. The problem is that this is a very inefficient process, making you lose energy faster, that means your ammo is reduced, and dramatically increasing your heat generation while using these monstrous normal shots. Though, I have a word of advice for this outlier. Since Heavy Hitter already has a damage increase and is the only overclock that ignores the charge mechanics of the EPC, I'd personally recommend using the Plasma Splash modification. It gives your stubborn behind the AoE it's missing out on and provides a nice backup for when you're out of primary ammo. Going back to our charge shots, we have Overcharger. This overclock looks at the positives of your big projectile and decides to amplify them further. At the cost of two extra ammo, each charge shot has increased damage, AoE, and area damage. Unfortunately, your cooling rate isn't as good, but that's whatever. Since Overcharger is the only EPC overclock to increase your charge damage, you may find yourself especially enjoying the Burning Nightmare and Thin Containment Field mods. Yes, I'll quickly give a summary of the community's favorite Tier 5s. On top of providing your weapon with heat generation, Burning Nightmare prevents your charge shot from exploding while granting it the power to clip through enemies really slowly. You can imagine that this sluggish ball of death having 50% more damage isn't exactly good for your target's life expectancy. On the other hand, and with slightly better heat management, Thin Containment Field creates a volatile mass that can be detonated by any dwarves nearby. Upon you or your allies firing upon this hazard, it bursts in a wide area around it, disintegrating both bugs and any rock or stone unfortunate enough to be in your way. I think it goes without saying that 1.5 times big number is really good, but it appears that Persistent Plasma doesn't think so. This overclock reduces both your charge damage and area damage by 15. This seems rather bad, but Persistent Plasma redeems itself by introducing one last mechanic before we leave the EPC. Upon having your charge shot detonate, the energy will linger for a while, causing a plasma area effect to occupy the space. Not only does this deal damage to anything walking by, but said victims will suffer from extreme heat exhaustion forcing them to slow down a little while in the plasma puddle. So despite Persistent Plasma's damage reductions, it still gets the job done. Lastly, we're weaponizing microwaves with the Colette Wave Cooker. Similar to the EPC, this weapon follows a system of expelling energy and generating heat. So naturally, the first overclock makes the adjustment from ballistics to batteries more tolerable. Liquid cooling system irons out the edges of this weapon type by reducing the effect of heat on your system. What I mean by this is that attacking with this weapon generates less heat, it cools down faster when not in use, and if you do overload your cooker, the overheat duration is reduced. Just a delightful no-consequence overclock for you to play with. Do you know what I haven't seen much of during these sidearms? Close quarters combat. Probably because Driller's primaries are all short to medium range, so he's in need of the extra distance from time to time. But what if you did want to irradiate bugs at point blank range? Then Super Focus Lens has you covered. With a simple amplification of your radiation beam, the rays you admit deal extra damage to anything within a sedan's length from you. And don't worry, this overclock is clean as well, so there aren't any downsides to your melee ranged machinations. Unlike with Diffusion Ray. With this overclock, your beam is less solid, resulting in minus one damage. Oh, woe is you. How could you possibly recover from that? Well, the modified ray phases through enemies now, dealing deeps to multiple foes and scrambling their atoms in the process. This distortion of their molecules feels just as torturous as you'd imagine, so they're slowed down to a crawl, making this weapon as disruptive as a- OW! What? Okay.
Mega Power Supply replaces your AAAs with 9 volts and unleashes the effect on the locals at ludicrous speeds. Your bigger batteries naturally increase how much power ammo you have. But what's unexpected is that the Wave Cooker was prepared for this change and can microwave bugs faster because of it. Okay, it's not that prepared. Since it's still designed around a smaller power source, cooling down your coils takes twice as long and overheating your weapon puts it out of commission for longer. Another overclock with overheating strife is blistering necrosis. Using this overclock makes your weapon build heat faster and decreases its cooling efficiency. With the negatives out of the way, let's talk about what makes this special. You've removed any safeguard placed inside this weapon so that your enemies are afflicted with the full might of your ray gun. Being bombarded by an assault of unhindered microwaves causes their flesh to boil. This effect is visualized by these glowing growths that begin to appear on your target. Now, what is your first reaction when you get a blister? If you answered remove it with military grade weaponry, then... Don't. The hell's wrong with you? But for our purposes, that's exactly what we're doing. These cancerous growths count as weak points for the creature they're attached to, but are also a separate entity. This means you and your team can deal excessive damage with both piercing and AoE weapons. Additionally, popping these plasma pimples will deal a burst of damage to their target, and is considered a kill from a mechanical perspective. This means you can slap the Boiler Ray mod on your wave cooker and blow up everything. But if you'd rather kill your enemies the slow and painful way instead of the fast and painful way, then let me show you our final overclock, Gamma Contamination. While you are assaulting enemies with your burnless barbecue, you have a chance to irradiate your target. This radiation sickness deals damage over time, but also causes its host to emit a field of ionizing energy. This radius doesn't do anything to the creature at its center, but anything nearby takes radiation damage whether they have their own nuclear field or not. Since this overclock has a powerful AoE, its base damage, ray width, and battery capacity are all reduced, so exploit those status effects and share the warmth of cell degeneration. Upon rewatching all of these, the next video was the one that made me think, ah, this is why people believe I ingest Adderall and caffeine pills by the bottle. Fun fact, those substances actually have a calming, if not fatiguing, effect on me due to my ADHD. This video sees me implementing more mainstream humor with sound effects and some dank may -mays. Welcome back to Engineer, the only dwarf with a degree in express mailing bugs back to their maker. The epicenter of this class is obviously the sentry, but you need to arm yourself to back up your backup. Your weapons may seem run of the mill, but tucked behind every corner is a quirk that makes them stand out. <laughs> So let's get into it and modify these organ emulsifiers. Starting with the Warthog Auto 210, we have a perfect opportunity to mention one of these lesser known features. Any pellet fired from this shotgun has a 10% chance to stun its prey if it hits a weak point. Since you fire 8 pellets by default, you have a decent chance of concussing anything you give buckshot based oral surgery. I can guarantee most of the player base didn't know this was a thing, but now you do, and that's perfect since we're going to improve this with our first overclock. Stunner spreads the magic of our brain busting ballistics by making the stun chance apply to any part of the body. Now you don't have to remove the tonsils of your target to give them a headache. You can just fill them with holes the normal way. And they won't have the will to fight back. Whoa, 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 don't start blasting battles yet. I haven't told you the best part. Since your victims now crave death, and it doesn't make sense to have increased stun chance when your target is already stunned, this overclock makes your shoddy deal extra damage to anything that's seen stars. Maybe you should add the minor adjustments mod to the mix to add insult to their many injuries. Speaking of dishing out dermis dilators more faster, Lightweight Magazines does exactly that. With less weight to carry around, your max ammo is increased and swapping out magazines takes less time. Between that and your sentry, I mourn the souls who dare think there will be a stop to your onslaught. Magnetic pellet alignment may lack its predecessor's finesse, but it can still deliver cranium deconstructors with great efficiency. Stuffing our shells with magnetized munitions may not have been the best idea. Your shells have a tendency to get stuck to the walls of your weapon when racking another round, and your rate of fire suffers from it. The good news is, once these babies are airborne, your pellets will be pulled towards each other, thus tightening your spread. Additionally, once these projectiles enter the gray matter of their target, they have no difficulty reuniting, carving tunnels through the soft brain tissue of your enemies, translating to increased weak point damage. Sorry to short you on the balanced, but the Warthog only has 5 overclocks in total, and I'd much prefer having 2 unstables. Cycle Overload starts this category by optimizing the rate you rack shells. This gives your shotgun double the fire rate and somehow makes your pellets fly with a little more malice, thus increasing your damage. Though this acceleration of lead marbles causes them to soar a bit more haphazardly, increasing your spread radius and decreasing your ability to snipe. Also, this adjustment to the mechanisms makes loading your weapon take a little longer since they haven't been properly optimized for the speed of combat. Finishing off the Warthog, we have Mini Shells. You replace your normal size munitions with shells of the same gauge, but are half the size. Which are real, by the way! I can't find a stock image of Mini Shotgun Shells, so here. Whoop. They look like that. Naturally, cutting your shells in half will grant you all of the benefits of having 50% less volume to deal with. Your mag size? Doubled. Your recoil? Halved. 
your ammo doubled. Uh, almost. And the best part is, the downsides don't follow this pattern. Your damage is only reduced by 2 compared to the weapon's base damage of 7. Unfortunately, packing only half the powder in your rounds reduces their force enough to remove your stun chance. And also set your stun duration to 0? What? Eh, it's not the end of the world. With how dramatic the positives are, you can equip any configuration of modifications and still have a great time. Like turning your shotgun into an armor-eating machine gun that saws through enemies, or maxing out your ammo count while equipping turret whip to encourage your sentry to perform better. I'll teach you a lesson about efficiency, you little shit. The Stubby Voltaic SMG may get a neutral reaction out of you, but you may find its secrets rather shocking. It electrocutes things. Without adjustments, each bullet you fire has a 25% chance to trigger the electrocution status effect. It also has some armor break tacked on there, but that's not going to actively affect half of our overclocks, so we don't care. Super Slim Rounds puts your bullets on a diet, allowing you to cram an extra few in your magazine. Since these tiny terminators are more aerodynamic, this also decreases your spread, perfect for drilling through exoskeletons and multifying fleshy bits with your passive armor break. God damn it. Well-oiled machine, uh, oils your machine. Well. With a hearty helping of grease in your gears, all the bits and bobs of your stubby can slide against each other with- THAT DOES NOT SOUND GOOD! Uh, friction. It's not there. Fire rate and reload time are more gooder. Alright, we're gonna talk about the electricity now. EM Refire Booster charges your bullets with even more electricity. You'd think this would increase your chance to zap your targets, which it does, just not in the way you're expecting. This energy recycling grants your SMG plus 2 electric damage. This damage type causes the electrocuted status effect, but it's independent from your passive chance to electrocute something. Although the chances to taste something are separate, the status effect is the same, so you can take this opportunity to equip non-electrical modifications and still inflict static on your foes. This overclock increases your fire rate as well, guaranteeing electricity in a timely manner. Just make sure you're close enough to land your shots since your spread is wider. The next one is a little counterintuitive. Lightweight rounds replaces the metal of your bullets with something a bit less dense to lighten your load. Naturally, you're going to take this lack of chronic back pain as a sign to carry even more ammo. You'd think bringing more bullets would also merit a fire rate increase to distribute them efficiently, but these frail rounds physically can't handle the loading mechanism of your SMG. To prevent your rounds from shattering inside your weapon, your rate of fire is tragically decreased. Additionally, using such fragile rounds results in less damage being dished out. At least you have a whole lot of them to make up for it. Alright, it's time to get into my favorite overclocks for the stubby, the unstables. Why am I calling exaggerated attention to these overclocks specifically? Because the positives of these two only apply when you tase turrets. Notice how I didn't specify yours. If you want to squad up with your fellow engineers, you can abuse their turrets as well as your own for maximum static action. I can't really tell if this is optimal, or what's going on past the perimeter for that matter, but I think we're winning. This is certainly my team comp for Has5 salvage missions. Before we actually use these overclocks, I'd advise equipping upgraded capacitors to increase your chance of triggering these overclocks, improved gas system to increase how quickly the chance comes, and conductive bullets to make anything affected by your electricity receive additional damage from your SMG. Anyway, let's actually talk about the overclocks in question, starting with Turret Arc. Now, a few of you have told me that Turret Arc is... <clears throat> poopy bad. And to that I say, I don't care! I think this overclock is awesome, and I firmly believe someone should be running it when you're force stacking the Red Ranger. You present me a single lightning fence, and I raise you six sentry guns and an epilepsy warning. Who's having fun now? Oh, right, I was supposed to be telling you guys what it actually does. At the cost of max ammo and fire rate, you can divert your stream of bullets into the side of a sentry to charge them with electricity. This electrifying development triggers based on your weapon's electrocution chance. While greased with lightning, your turrets emit a field of electricity that tases anything that gets too close. This includes yourself, so in order to keep your amount of Lichtenbohr figures to a minimum, I'd recommend reloading your sentry after the charge has depleted. What doesn't apply to you is an 80% speed reduction imparted on any bugs that try to touch your turret. No? Are you not convinced? Well, that's when I deploy another Gemini turret or assault one of my friend's precious masterpieces to create a literal electric fence. If two turrets are within 15 meters of each other while charged, the damage area of the lightning field will extend out to connect the sentries. Suddenly your defenses have gone from trivial to ironclad. This effect can also be daisy-chained between turrets and last 20 seconds before you need to refresh it. Couple that with some questionable turret placements, the slow the lightning applies, and a friendly reminder that our fence posts are GUNS! And you'll be trapping enemies in a static spider web surrounded by automated machine guns. Now, my immense love for turret arc is not to discredit any other overclocks. In fact, if you're running this team composition, I'm expecting half the dwarves to be using the next one. 
Turret EM Discharge. Right off the bat, this overclock follows the same rule of triggering based on electrocution chance. Though instead of powering up your turret, it bursts in a shockingly large area around it. If you couldn't tell by the theme of this weapon or the pun I so expertly placed, this sphere of energy does electric damage as well. Just a lot more. The damage decreases if your victim is outside the 3 meter radius and they have a chance to become terrified of your exploding sentry. The fear is mildly misplaced since you're only able to trigger this effect every second and a half per sentry. Actually, that fear is working against them, since once they turn around, they'll be right back in the kill radius and your sentry will be ready for another burst. Just keep track of this overclock's decreased mag size and remember that your bullets will be doing less damage than usual. <laughs> Lastly, we have the Lock-On Smart Rifle. Ha! I said it right this time. Unlike the other two weapons, this one's secret isn't a secret at all. Ignore that Stubby says Voltaic in the name, it is not as obvious as the Lock-On's abilities. If you don't know what the Smart Rifle does, then you either haven't played the game since it was added, or are in the part of my audience that doesn't play the game. Shout out to you guys, by the way, your existence proves that I'm doing something right. Anyway, the specialty of the Lock-On is that instead of firing continuously, it targets anything you are looking at. Releasing the trigger causes a barrage to be unleashed in the exact order the marks were made in. Additionally, this rifle has armor break, so if your bullets decide to curve into the hardened carapace of a Praetorian, they will bore a hole through its armor as well as its organs. It's important to note that if something strays too far away from the center of your screen, you will lose a lock on it. And if you don't want to use this mechanic or you are fighting some feisty loot bugs, you can tap fire to treat it like a normal rifle. With that out of the way, let's talk about the lock-ons overclocks. Starting with a razor, we are fiddling with the targeting system. Specifically, we're increasing the amount of targets you can have tagged at any given moment. This amount is a multiplier, so you can stack it with the aperture extension modification. A racer also increases your magazine size by 12, so you can unleash more volleys before reloading. Since this overclock doesn't have any weird semantics about reaching max lock count or needs you to deal less damage to deal more damage, we'll use this chance to equip electric generator mod and electrochemical rounds. If you shoot at something with three or more marks on them, electric generator mod will shock the target in question. This is worth mentioning because Electrochemical Rounds immediately follows it up with increased damage against electrified, or on fire, enemies. Armor Break Module takes a different approach to the lock-on. Instead of tampering with your targeting, your bullets get extra spicy when you hit your lock cap. The base damage of your ballistics isn't changed, but each round heads towards their target with a little more purpose, causing them to jackhammer through armor with great efficiency. Another adjuster of ammunition is explosive chemical rounds. Targeting an enemy with three or more bullets will cause the last one in that portion of your barrage to explode on impact. Yes, this means your bullet can burst if something gets in its way. The explosion itself deals damage in a 4 meter radius and has a chance to cause fear. Since the blast doesn't occur if your target dies too fast, it'd be in your best interest to reduce your damage a little. Luckily, this overclock takes the initiative and reduces it for you. It also reduces your max ammo, but such is the price of grenade bullets. Seeker Rounds isn't limited by the laws of obstacles like ECR was, or any other instance of the Smart Rifle for that matter. Instead of being blocked by armor, walls, or enemies trying to expedite their expiration date, your rounds phase through them, ensuring that they will hit their target despite this weapon being entirely based around not missing. Additionally, this overclock increases how far away a creature must wander from the center of your screen before leaving the range of your sensor. This increase is multiplicative, so it can stack with a CCD array add-on modification for a stupidly high lose lock threshold. Unfortunately, all the added systems we crammed into your weapon do hinder some of its more basic functions. Your magazines tend to get jammed a little for an increased reload time, and your burst fire rate has been reduced in an attempt to prevent you from rattling apart R&D's shoddy soldering. We are part of a multi-bajillion dollar spacefaring mining corporation. You think we can afford parts that actually work? Of course not! But taping together the ones that kinda work is the whole point of overclocks, especially with the unstables. Speaking of, the first one for the lock-on is Executioner. This overclock earns its unnerving title by dealing bonus weak point damage when you reach your target cap. That doesn't seem too fantastic until you realize that your targeting time is halved, and one of the quote-unquote negatives of this overclock is that your max target count is decreased. This means you're reaching full lock faster and dealing more damage because of it. But we can make things worse. For them, not for you. Opening our modification list, we can equip Shutter Speed Sensor to increase your targeting speed even further. On top of that, we can add Unstable Lock Mechanism, which boosts your damage at full lock similar to the Overclock's crit bonus. With this lethal combination, you'll select all and delete any hordes in your way. Uh, you do have minus 12 to both your mag size and ammo capacity, but this overclock has been about teleporting your entire ammo belt into the enemies as quickly as possible, so you already came into this expecting to reload. Lastly, we have... Uh... I don't know how to classify this one. A support overclock? <laughs> I know, right? Ghostship, how dare you assume I'm going to perform teamwork in this cooperative game? Uh, ignore that, it's contrary to my narrative. 
At the cost of a much longer lock time, Neural Lasso uses 5G waves to hamper the movement of anything you're targeting. This effect stacks with diminishing returns, capping at 10 with a 65% movement speed reduction. Yes, you can still have more than 10 locks on a single target if you want. Since slowing large enemies while your inebriated co-workers disassemble their exoskeletons is kinda depressing, your locks will expire after 5 seconds. But do not fret, my slightly disgruntled friend, for your psychokinesis is still attached to a lead-based face reconstructor. Alright, we've made it to the last one, the Engineer's Secondary Overclocks. With my completely arbitrary order for these videos, I am so glad that this one ended up as the finale. I got to use all of my knowledge from my previous videos to properly accentuate how terrifying these weapons are. Welcome back to Engineer, the on-site researcher whose IQ is about the same as their white blood cell count. Your secondaries use the power of planet-shattering might to vaporize any minor inconvenience that may plague your sight line. Misuse of this equipment can result in severe bodily harm and mild natural disasters. So don your bomb squad armor, join my Discord to increase your casualty count, and let's get into these atom erasers. Starting off is probably the most complicated weapon, so let me give you a quick guide on how to operate it. You take this metal cylinder, place it gently into this tube, and... The Deepcore 40mm PGL is a break-action grenade launcher that somehow got approved for subterranean use. I don't know if you realize this, but setting off explosives in confined spaces like rooms, tunnels, and caves is the fastest way to make your brain leak out of your ears. Be gone. Inescapable shot. <laughs> Inescapable shockwaves aside, if you don't want to become a former alive person, you better stay as far away from these grenades as possible. There you can find out what it feels like to have your limbs atomized and any remaining parts of your body be replaced with third degree radiation burns. Don't worry, not all of the overclocks for the deep core are as cataclysmic as that. Clean Sweep just performs minor adjustments to the composition of your rounds to improve how wide and painful each explosion is without the need for a Geiger counter. The damage increase isn't noticeable enough to merit using it on a larger adversary, but that small amount mixed with the area increase makes it exceptional at leveling groups of grunts as well as unleveling the ground. On an even more simple note, we have Packrat. This overclock looks at your measly amount of munitions and decides to increase that quantity to maximize efficiency of glyphid gulifying between resupplies. Goodbye, gentlemen. You get two more grenades. That's it. Compact Rounds realizes that giving you a couple more grenades just isn't enough. Granted, we had to sacrifice some of the explosive materials in your rounds to achieve this. Sabotaging your ammunition results in the same stat changes as from Clean Sweep, just in reverse. The damage of your blast is decreased slightly, along with the radius being smaller as well. At least you have five extra ammo to waste at your leisure. Speaking of wasting company resources, I've concocted an extra expensive mixture to allow you to kill things with even less efficiency. Would you like to know more? The RJ250 compound is significantly lighter than the combustibles in your standard grenade. This makes them easier to transport and thus grants you a significant boost to the amount you can carry. It's worth noting that this is a multiplier, so it synergizes with the ammunition increase mods. These lighter explosives also allow you to reload with more haste. The problem with this magical substance is that it doesn't actually do too well when it comes to rupturing skeletal structures. This causes an immense damage decrease, but also reveals to us what the RJ stands for in its name. Rocket Jump! If you decide to fight with your instincts of self-preservation, you can walk into the blast radius of your projectile and catapult yourself across the map almost as well as a stabber vine on a 45 degree angle. What the fuck was that? With this mobility, you can quickly scale cliffs, negate fall damage if you have the mad skills, or even catch up to the drill dozer when it's doing something stupid. Where are you going? Why are you doing donuts? With all that in mind, this damage decrease is more of a blessing since this amount of self-inflicted concussive force would be enough to turn you quadriplegic in mere moments. But that's nothing compared to the dangers of the next overclock, Fat Boy. Over the last few adjustments, we've been gradually decreasing the weight of your ammo by giving you less heavy and less volatile materials. So what if we replaced your gunpowder and igniter with uranium-235? Now your projectiles weigh about 5 pounds each and are as powerful as- this increased weight decreases your ammo count by a significant multiplier and makes it so that aiming with your weapon is less about line of sight and more about applying your knowledge of parabolas from Algebra 1. On the topic of using calculations to aim, any dwarf with their bitter gems is going to equip the proximity trigger mod to maximize their damage radius at the cost of occasionally playing a little game called Try Not To Erase All Evidence Of Yourself From This Plane Of Existence. That reminds me, I haven't gotten to the positives yet. Having your munitions go nuclear instantly atomizes anything not strong enough to survive swimming in the core of a star. Everyone in McKinney is dead. 
Did you know that the center of a nuclear explosion can reach about 100 million degrees Celsius? That is about six and a half times as hot as the center of the sun. It's hot in McKinney. If Earth plasmafying temperatures weren't enough for you, the aftermath of your localized apocalypse is somehow more cruel. With help from an increased blast radius, everything left behind will become highly irradiated for an extended period of time. This makes any bugs that somehow survived the blast wish they hadn't, and anything trying to reinforce their fallen brethren liquefy on their way to battle. My advice for this overclock? Use the 4 times area damage multiplier to max out the efficiency of your pocket extinction events and make the most of your 3 nukes. Now I am become Death, the destroyer of bugs. Let's push the horrors of atomic weaponry to the side for a moment and talk about the Fat Boy's comedic counterpart, Hyper Propellant. Instead of instantly erasing anything smaller than a bulldozer, this overclock replaces your doomsday devices with what I can only describe as a rock with a thruster on it. With a plus, a lot, to your projectile velocity, this mini-meteor begins to resemble a bullet rather than a bomb. And that trend continues, since the blast radius is reduced by a 0.3 multiplier. You also have two less bricks to lob at things, but that's whatever. What makes these rocket-propelled cinder blocks truly stand out is that their direct damage is astronomically increased. This means instead of blasting the floor to hit as many things as possible, you're gonna want to bludgeon the biggest thing in your way with these grenade-shaped cannonballs. This is what I always imagine when talking about hesh rounds. High explosive, squash head. You may have noticed it already, but the force at which you apply these tank shells to their targets causes their corpses to enter the next dimension, preventing on-death effects and striking fear into whatever lies beyond the veil. Okay, okay, we'll stop talking about reality-altering forces and instead cover something a bit more tame. Repurposed construction equipment that catapults fences made of the fourth state of matter to bisect and even quadsect anything in your way. The breach cutter was a bit too dangerous for use on the space rig, so management decided to give it to the one person whose sanity is almost as low as the drillers and see what would happen to the population count of Hoxies. Man, everyone else gets pistols, what the heck is this character? Lightweight Cases does exactly what its name suggests. The vessels containing this churning magenta mass are remade with lighter metals to increase how many rounds you can carry. Naturally, these lighter cases also make reloading a bit less cumbersome so you can dispense more plasma walls in a shorter time frame. Roll Control is another one of those rare clean overclocks that actually change the mechanics of your weapon. You can shoot lasers out normally with neither buffs nor debuffs, but holding down the fire button causes your next projectile to spin in a straight line. Upon lifting your finger, or whatever other appendage you operate your mouse with, the rotation will stop and cannot be restarted. At first glance this may seem useless, but you will eventually find moments where you want to kill something on the ground and 7 feet above the ground. Wait a minute. Alright, I just thought of this while I was writing. You can see where I had my epiphany. I wonder... Oh my god! <laughs> Equipping the Plasma Trail mod with this overclock creates a corkscrew of burning material. I don't know how good this combo is since I kept curving my beams around the enemies, but the visuals are funny and even missing can result in some damage. Anyway, back to the overclock's actual use. If you find yourself needing to kill something both below and above, you can just rotate your plasma cutter to adjust for the enemy's positioning. This feature is also optimal at removing bugs from the sides of walls. But when it comes to floors, you may want to invest in something a bit more efficient. Stronger Plasma Current is here to fill that need as the Breach Cutter's mythical third clean overclock. This one increases the energy pumped into the projectile to increase their damage output. On top of that, the higher amount of power makes your atomizing wave last longer and by extension travel farther. Bringing back that click and hold mechanic is return to sender. Holding down the fire button seemingly sends out a laser as normal, but once you release it, it remembers all the crimes you've committed and reverses its trajectory to try and sever your spinal column from your brainstem. Sadly, their treason is in vain since you can't damage yourself with this weapon, but it does do damage to everything else. Since you're doubling your DPS, the amount of cartridges you can carry is reduced by 6. If this was truly balanced as all things should be, your ammo would be reduced by half, but it's not. That means your damage is most definitely increased, as long as you don't try to sprint while holding the trigger, thus activating the effect early. The only thing that will increase is your depression levels. High Voltage Crossover uses the power of faulty wiring to pump some lightning into your laser beam. Now anything that survives being lightsabered in half will be electrocuted as well. I went with a strategy of stacking DOTs for this overclock, but everything I looked at died too fast. So it must be working! Since the ammunition we're using for this overclock didn't pass quality assurance testing, the charges don't exactly fit correctly into the cases. This production defect reduces your mag capacity by a multiplier of 0.6. That does mean you can still increase it with mods, just not by much. You know what else has decreased magazine capacity by a multiplier instead of a finite amount? My mom! Spinning Death. 
Eh, I already introed with one of the negatives, so I might as well cover those parts first. As I mentioned earlier, your mag capacity is reduced by a multiplier. The difference is that instead of it being 0.6, this one is 0.3. You're basically rocking a single shot magazine with this one. Additionally, your ammo count and damage are multiplied down, so any attempt to increase your stats will be an uphill battle. With that out of the way, we can talk about why this projectile is making you nauseous. Firing your breech cutter propels your projectile a pitiful distance forward before locking it in place. Once unfolded, your laser gate will attempt to cut a hole through reality. It won't succeed, but it will smack anything in its radius over and over again. The lifetime of this circular saw is increased by a metric ton and the amount of wide it is is increased as well to hit as many things as many times as possible. For maximum bug battering, I expect… no. I demand you use the Disruptive Frequency Tuning mod. This will stun anything that wanders inside and prevents them from escaping until either the projectile dissipates or their soul detaches from their body like a lizard abandoning their tail. For extra spicy battle blending, I found that the Plasma Trail mod made the whole experience just so much worse for anything that wasn't me. On the topic of torturing Glyphids with damage over time, we have Inferno. This is another hard one to capture since most of the enemies already instantly die to this weapon. Because of that, the damage is reduced by a whole lot and the armor break is almost a quarter of its potential. Replacing it is the addition of heat damage, fire damage, and a hidden status effect that deals both of those to their target over the course of 5 seconds. All of this ignition means your breach cutter instantly combusts anything it passes through, boiling both their exteriors and any organs caught in the crossfire. Or cross plasma. <laughs> Cuts commercial, please. Alright, now that I've washed out my non-existent mouth with soap, let's continue. The Shard Diffractor is the only weapon in the game that is a direct product of our actions during a mission. Harvesting the power of one of these things, we turn the tables on Hoxies by using its own defenses against it. This weapon stores a charge of energy that can be pumped through the crystal to achieve devastating results. This death ray heats up its target, starts melting anything nearby, and disintegrates whatever you're looking at. Sometimes that's more than just enemies. On top of that, I'm pretty sure the crystal we stole just absorbs the souls of its victims, since the biomass converter modification increases the amount of charge whenever you liquefy an enemy. I don't care what the title of this mod implies, there is no way you're converting biomass here. This is straight up blood magic. Releasing the trigger or running out of lives to consume with your philosopher stone will cause your weapon to recharge over a short period of time. Now that I've gone over the basics, yes, using alchemy to convert souls into a prolonged key blast is part of the basics, let's talk about the overclocks. Efficiency Tweaks is the trusty ammo increase with zero downsides. Your battery capacity has been increased as well as your charge capacity. This means you can fire for longer before you need to recharge and you can wait a little longer before you need to resupply. That's it for the cleans, this weapon is too epic to have more than one, so it has three balanced overclocks instead. Starting with Automated Beam Controller. Now with this one you have to be extra careful as to when you decide to use it since pulling the trigger will unleash a torrent of fire that cannot be suppressed. Unless you use any mechanics that would cancel an animation like swinging your pickaxe. If you manage to stop your mini Godzilla beam you will still lose half of your remaining charge to punish you for your actions. Call it a blessing or a curse but your max charge is reduced by 20% so your laser doesn't last as long but you lose less ammo when you cancel. On the other hand your fire rate is increased so your beam bursts better but you lose more ammo faster when you mess up. Eh, we'll just increase your ammo capacity in case you pull your trigger by accident or something. Additionally, the recharge time is decreased, allowing for multiple barrages in semi-quick succession. Slowing things down a bit is feedback loop. Instead of swiftly dispatching foes with a rapid assault of heat waves, this overclock cranks up the temperature with every second. Holding down the kill things button slowly ramps up your weapon's power. Starting at the default numbers, every second that goes by increases your damage and splash radius. Since this increase is based on time and does not have a cap, I'd advise increasing your charge capacity with the Aluminum Foil DIY mod. This is also a good chance to remind you about Biomass Converter. Tell me, what happens when infinite scaling encounters infinite fuel? Alright, I lied a little. You can't just shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. Biomass Converter only gives you 3 ammo every quarter second, and I'm pretty sure there's a cap on feedback loop stat increase. At some point. So the best you'll get is an effect radius large enough to evenly melt a small school bus. The big ol' stat boosts you accumulate get reset every time the laser stops, and your ammo is decreased to limit the amount of times you can create a localized solar flare. For this next one, instead of increasing how wide our evaporation radius is, we're going to focus our beam to create scientifically baffling results. Volatile Impact Reactor takes the concept of burning ants with a magnifying glass to the next level. Except these tweaks aren't for dealing bonus damage to tiny sugar thieves. With these adjustments, your beam is hot enough to instantly liquefy any surfaces you assault. I think steel boils at about this temperature, so... <laughs> Look, weathermen reacting to big numbers is funny to me. Blasting the surrounding walls of Hoxies will cause the rock and stone to grow molten blisters, along with igniting anything that walks upon it. 
The Dazzler module modification will aid you in this endeavor by slowing down anything that gets too close to your laser reconstruction of the topography. To achieve these obsidian dissolving results, we had to narrow your area radius by 50%. Also, the tech we crammed in there to make the floor, in fact, lava, has reduced your charge capacity to a point where you won't be able to melt your way through terrain. I have a quick question for you. Have you ever looked at your platform gun and wondered, why the heck would I use anything other than repellent additive? Well, I have your answer. With Plascrete Catalyst, we have finally decided to weaponize your support tool. Firing your laser directly at a platform causes it to begin boiling, thus superheating the air around it. This causes your area damage to double, area radius to double, and one more thing. After superheating the surface of a platform for a whole second without interruptions, the compound within will start to react, causing a massive explosion. This blast radius steals a large amount of damage, can break armor, and can even cause fear to anything that survives. Also, more often than not, you'll have extra plascrete left over for you to detonate. So, I'll bring your attention back to the question at hand. Why would we use anything other than repellent additive? To invite the bugs to ground zero. Dazzler module will help us with this as well, since the slowdown will essentially trap enemies in the blast radius and let them pile up for a bigger killing spree. Killing spree. By the way, it takes longer to recover from firing with this silver clock, so make sure you finish off your targets before letting go. You also have 50 less ammo. Lastly on our list of 148 overclocks, we have Overdrive Booster! <gasps> With this overclock, nothing changes. Literally nothing. All your stats are the same. UNLESS YOU PRESS R! Trying to reload while firing will activate your <gasps> This locks your weapon into overdrive, forcing you to fire until out of charge and increasing your recharge time after use. Like the automated beam controller overclock, this ability can be cancelled by varying means but consumes half of your remaining ammo as punishment. Except this time we aren't gonna do that. Why? Because of a two and a half damage multiplier. Uh oh. Using your BOOM <gasps> unleashes the true might of the sun on your enemies, reducing any organics to a bubbling grease. The amount of energy you're outputting is enough to force you back, so you have to keep your feet planted to avoid melting in half anything behind the diffractor, including yourself! Though the efficiency of weaponizing a pulsar is enough to make any other threats to your safety disintegrate. There you have it, every single overclock as of the dates each video was released. I was a little nervous going into this because I had to watch my videos that were almost a year old, but I still enjoy all of these. I was operating under my motto of relentless progress while making these videos, and even though the first video wasn't bad, you can clearly see an increase in quality over the series. I hope you enjoyed this compilation slash behind the scenes, and once again, I'll see you victims in the lethal company. Ah!